Hey, what's up, Phil here, and today I wanna show you how to make this simple but very cool and kinda classy intro effect. This is from a question from a student of mine who found this intro on videohive.net, and they were wondering how they create it. It's actually pretty simple once you understand the basic technique, but if you're new to After Effects or if you just haven't thought about how would you do this, then it can be a little bit confusing. But once you know basically how to do one of these animations, you'll be able to do as many in as many different types of ways or shapes possible. So let's get into After Effects and I'm going to show you how to create this sort of effect from the very beginning. You can see here that I recreated this type of effect. I'll just play through it. I'm using the latest version of Adobe After Effects CC 2017. Can't believe they have a 2017 version, but you can do the same exact type of effect in really any version of Adobe After Effects. So let's set ourselves up first. The first thing you need to do is create your background layers, which are all of these images that I have used. You can use video, you could use photos. But what I did was I imported all of the photos. So I just created a folder in my project bin and you can see that I just brought in all of my photos. And then I created a composition and the way I did that was just by clicking that composition button and I'm just creating one that's 2997 frame rate, 1920 by 1080 and five seconds long. Now you can do this however long you want. So I'll just call this main comp. So this is a blank comp now. And then for all of these images, I created a bin or a folder, but I just, created a new composition, same settings, same size, and I just called it image one, set okay. And I don't want that in that folder because I don't want to get confused, but I had created that and then I just simply duplicated this by pressing command D on your keyboard. And that would be control D if you're on a PC, I'm on a Mac. You can see that it duplicates it into image seven, eight, nine, but if this is if you're just starting out, it will do image one, two, three, four, and do as many images as you need. And then basically add your photo and resize your photos to your composition. So you can see here in image one, I added this shot. And all these photos are actually coming from a competition that I'm running in my photography masterclass. Great group of students in that class, actually over 30,000 students in that class now, and we had over 400 submitted photos. We're giving away a $100 gift card, uh, Amazon gift card for the winner. We're picking that right now. So if you're interested in taking better photos, you can check out the Photography Masterclass. Uh, search for Photography Masterclass on Udemy or just go to videoschoolonline.com and check it out. I'll also link to it in the description below. So anyways, you have your image comps and I just created six. Um, you'll have however many you need. So here is the basic process of doing this. So let's take this image two, for example. Drop this onto your composition. So now we have a new layer, image two. Then we're going to go up to layer, new, adjustment layer. And let's just call this mask one. So I'm just pressing in there, pressing return, and typing in mask one. And sorry if I'm going fast, but for those of you who are beginners and are just trying to catch up, but I want to go fast enough for people who are a little bit more intermediate in After Effects uh, to be able to follow along and not get bored with me. So hopefully I'm going at a good pace. Comment below if I'm going at a good pace or I'm too slow or too fast. Then what I'm going to do is create a mask. So let's zoom out and I'm just zooming out with the scroll scroller thing on my mouse or you can click here and zoom out to a certain percentage and just take your pen tool. Now you can create any type of shape you want but we're going to kind of replicate what was in the project that we saw and I forget who asked about this project but thank you for asking about it and then what I'm going to do is just click right below something like this and close that. Now we have this sort of trapezoidal shape. If we go to image two and we go to this track mat column, and if you don't see that track mat, just click this toggle switches modes button down here in the bottom left. Change the track mat for your image layer to alpha mat mask one. And what that means is that whatever this 
adjustment layer, this mask is doing, or wherever this mask is, the layer beneath it will show. So this mask two is now adjusting this image two layer. So now we have to animate this mask. So I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit more and I'm actually going to close this down. So I'm just going to make this a little as small as possible. So something like that. And there we go. So if you press MM on your keyboard, you can get all of your mask properties. Set a keyframe for mask path and for mask expansion. And actually go ahead and set your mask expansion to something like negative five pixels. We just want to make sure that we don't see anything from beneath this. If this was at zero, you can see that there's a little line, a little sliver. So to get rid of that, just let's do, just do negative five pixels to be safe. Now with our mask path, we have this animation or this keyframe here. Let's go to one second and then let's go in with our selection tool and then to kind of right now all of our points are highlighted on our mask so if we just click one of them we're going to move the whole mask just click this layer and now we can pick individual layers move it down about like so so that still these two lines are sort of parallel to each other and then select the two bottom points the goal is to select the two bottom points and move it down. So let's zoom out just a bit, zoom out. So now you can see kind of what this animation is going to look like because I'm moving it right here like so. Got it? So now we can see as we play through this animation, it looks like that. Pretty cool, right? Around five frames or so, let's change the mask expansion to zero. And then let's easy ease these this mask path. So I'm just selecting both layers and pressing F9 on my keyboard. Or you can right click and say keyframe assistant, easy ease. So this is pretty cool if we play through this. That's a little reveal. Let's make it a little bit more dynamic. Let's add some motion to the photo. So if we go to this last keyframe at one, select our image layer and press P on our keyboard to bring up position, let's set a keyframe there. Then let's go to the front and let's at zero, where the first keyframe is for the mask animation too, and move this up just a bit, something like that. So now this moves down. Let's easy ease these keyframes. Again, function or F9. And then let's make this animation a little bit more dynamic. Okay, so I'm selecting both of these keyframes for mask path by clicking and hovering over them and then pressing shift on my keyboard and clicking and dragging over these ones. And let's go into our graph editor. Let's grab this keyframe over on the right side of this graph. And that's actually selecting both of those keyframes and drag to the left. Now, if you play through it, let's just loop this a little bit smaller on the timeline. That's starting to look pretty good. Okay, let's get out of our graph editor by just unclicking that. Let's click that toggle switches modes button and turn on motion blur for both of these layers. Then toggle on enable motion blur right here. That makes it look a little bit better as well. Okay, cool. We have our bottom half. Now we have to do our top half. Basically what we can do is just duplicate these two layers. So select both and press Command D on your keyboard. That duplicates both layers. But we have to kind of do the opposite of the mask or the reverse of this mask animation for this one. So if we select the mask two and press MM on our keyboard and then take, go to one second and then select these two points on our mask and instead go, whoops, select both and go up like so, the animation does this reverse thing. So it goes up like that, right? Pretty cool, pretty easy to do that. It's This animation it looks a lot more complicated than it really is. And then also let's reverse this motion for the image. So let's press select our image layer, press P, go to zero, and instead of having this up, let's move it down. 
And while I'm moving it, because I'm just clicking and dragging the image itself, I'm holding shift so it doesn't accidentally, let's, whoops, select this, so it ac accidentally doesn't go to the right or left, okay? So I'm moving it down. I could also just click on the position here, whoops, not the left or right y-axis, but the, or not the x-axis, the y-axis. So I can move this down. So now it is moving up. So now we have this first animation, which is what we saw in the video hive version. Now let's take this same idea and easily duplicate it. So now you know the process, you know what to do. We're using masks, we're using mask, mask with adjustment layers, and we're using the track mat option to, to do this. So now let's take another image. So let's say image six. This is a cool image of this owl. What I can do is simply duplicate, well, let's first duplicate the owl twice or once. So we have both owls. And then let's copy the effects for image two, the first image two, by pressing P on my keyboard, selecting the keyframes, copying them by pressing Command C, and then making sure we're at the very start of this image and pressing Command V. Now if I press P, you can see that on this layer, we have this same photo animation. Pretty cool. Let's do that for the second photo, the top photo, and we'll copy it and paste it. So now we have these two photos appearing on top of each other. We have to mask them out now. So let's just duplicate this mask one, move it above the first image six. Okay. Then let's change the track mat to alpha mat. And then let's just go ahead and take this mask two and duplicate it and move it above image six, the second one, and take this one, this image six, and change it to alpha mat. Let's go to toggle switches mode, make sure the image six has motion blur enabled. Let's just scrub through this to see if it worked. Yep, it did. Just copying and pasting. Now let's move this over to the left and it's going to start to appear as soon as this first photo almost hits its final resting spot. Boop, boop, pretty darn cool. I can even start this a little bit earlier just to make it a little bit more quick and dynamic. Pretty darn cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's see what I did for this next one. So this next one, I had this photo fly in from the top, right? And so if you get this by now, you're probably done with the tutorial, you're happy, and you, you can basically animate the mask however you want. You can split it from the middle, you can split it from the side. But I'll just show you, for example, let's take this image of this tree stump, which is an amazing photo. We will create a mask, and I could just copy and paste this mask, actually, instead of um, doing it another way, starting from scratch. And I lay it on top, layer it on top like that. Let's turn on motion blur for the image four, change the track mat to alpha mat mask five. And then let's look at this mat mask. So select mask five, press U on your keyboard to bring up all the keyframes. And let's just delete this first keyframe. And then let's take, go to the second keyframe right here, zoom out just a bit. Let's take these bottom two keyframes and with both selected, drag down. So now we have this sort of trapezoidal shape covering the entire image, right? So now if we go to the top and we select mask path, so that selects all of the points in the mask and we move this up, what happens is this whole mask comes down. Pretty cool, huh? And at the same time, we will add some motion to our image four moving down. And the one that's moving down is this first layer on the bottom. So it's image two, the very first one. I remember that. So I'm going to just copy and paste these keyframes from image two to this one. So now the tree stump is moving down as we have this full sort of on, reveal on, wipe on. So now if I play through this whole thing, doop, doop dupe pretty darn cool now let's show you the last one which is instead of splitting from the middle we have 
the split from the middle, but then also the split from the bottom. See how these first two, they split from the middle like that? One, two, it's coming from the middle. And then this last one, splitting from the top and splitting from the bottom. Super easy to do. Again, we're just copying our, basically our keyframes that we've created already. So let's take our next image, say this horse, pretty darn cool horse, horse. And uh, let's go ahead and duplicate it. We're going to make sure that motion blur is on. And then we're going to copy and paste the position animation. So first, let's bring up P or press U or P on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes for this first image. So it's the bottom half and we're going to paste it to this first one and then take this layer, press P on your keyboard, copy these keyframes and select your second or your top half, which will end up being your top half. And then let's duplicate mask one put this above this first image, like so, and then take mass two, duplicate it, put it above image five, like so, like this. And then let's go to toggle switches modes, make sure that the image layer is track map alpha map. Okay, so now we have the same sort of effect, but for this bottom one that's appearing, which is this one right now, we want it to grow on the opposite way. So what we can easily do is press U on our keyboard. Again, delete this first keyframe. And then what we will do is actually select all of this mass path and drag it down off of the composition. So now it's coming up like so. And we actually want the motion of this image to actually be the same as this top one. So let's press P for this top one, copy and paste. And then you'll see if I press P on the second one, the bottom one, and just paste it, it just copies these keyframes over it. And we're doing that so that the motion of the photo matches the motion of the wipe. And we can just stagger these. So if we want the top to appear first, we can just take this bottom one, stagger to the right just a little bit. Okay, so that is pretty darn cool. How did you like this tutorial? Did you like it? Submit a comment below if you thought it was helpful. Please share it, please like it, please subscribe to my channel. I try to do tutorials on After Effects. I have lots of tutorials on everything from Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, creating online courses. I actually run a full-time business creating online courses and I put out free content on YouTube like this and I make a full-time living from it. And it's from people like you who watch these tutorials, who enroll in full classes. And by the way, I have a full After Effects class if you're interested in it. And it's people like you who allow me to do this for a living. And it's when you share it, when you like it, when you watch the whole video, that's what keeps me going, especially when you submit comments and you know you like the tutorial. And I've learned so much from when I started and I'm still learning, so I know my tutorials aren't perfect, but if there's any way that I can make them better, let me know. And by the way, if you're interested in doing this yourself, whatever you do, if you're, you know, After Effects and you want to teach that, or you know how to ride a horse or take photos or chop wood or fly owls or hike in the desert, if you know stuff like that, you can teach courses on those skills and make a full-time income. It, there's people around the world that want to learn skills from people like you and by creating your own courses and sell, selling them on your own site or putting them on places like Udemy or Skillshare, you can get paid for creating your own video content. I actually teach people how to do this and if you want a free seven step guide to doing this, you can actually go to videoschoolonline.com. Right now at the time of posting this, there's a great freebie that you can download from the homepage, complete step-by-step -step process to creating an online course and selling it and I'll give you exclusive access to a one hour webinar showing you how I make six figures each year with my online courses. Cool, anyways, that's the end of my promotion <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. Thanks a lot.